So hit it. Hello and welcome to This is the Play Sports, the podcast. Here we are on Sunday afternoon. Full of energy, ready That's to right. go. Yeah, we've had way too much Mountain Dew and I, I don't know what you're drinking. What is that? Grapefruit juice. Grapefruit juice. That's, That's what those guys drink. I guess it's going, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're excited. We got we got a couple of good guests today. You want to tell, tell our uh, listeners we do. about us? We yeah. got uh, our good friends Austin Horton and Mike Sorensen. We appreciate them both joining us on Extremely Short Notice. Good guys. We owe you one. Great to be here. Yeah, we sure do. Yeah. Excited. Just, excited. Quick question for Austin. Austin, producer at 1280 The Zone, right? He prides himself on having terrific lead-in music to his when he comes back from break at the, at the start of the shows. I, I think that's probably the hallmark of your the shows you produce. So I was wondering what you think about our lead in music. Well, I'm glad you asked me uh, because <laughs> that the first the first little part, the kids choir, the children's choir, I was in that what? recording. I'm in that Shit. children's. That fits the same children's choir. So when the state turned a hundred in 1996, there was this big celebration and. Uh, I, me and my brother were part of this big kind of like play choir performance type thing. And oh my so God. that's, that's near and dear to my heart. Wow. Beautiful. Wow. That is small world there. The sad thing is I was old in 96. So <laughs> I was, four. Really yeah, old I was now. four years old. Yeah. But uh, you were four in 1996. Yeah. Oh my God. I was born in 92. Yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. You know, every time I hear it, I think it's going to be Here Come the Stars from back in the 70s. Like, you remember that, that song? I do. We, that we could, we could load that one up for future yeah, episodes. It almost sounds sure. like that, the same kind of music. So, you know, well, next time. We pride ourselves on the great music. And Austin does a great job with the movie zone. I listen to it all the time. And I'm sorry. I'm a Rocky Balboa fan. And I know that's not one of your favorite <laughs> series, but. Uh, I will go to number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number 10. I'll support the franchise no matter how many movies they make. Well, good. You go and tell me how, how it is because I've seen it already. So. <laughs> Don't tell you on the They are yeah. predictable. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. They are very predictable. Uh, they did a great job with that. And Sorny and I go Thank way you. back, uh, our Deseret News days, and I appreciate it. We're been buddies for a long time. Even though he's a Highland guy and I'm an East guy, we, we get along. So. Yeah, just barely. Barely. Yeah. It's like this. So, guys, let's get started. Uh, we got four quarters of fun today. The first quarter, let's start with Dwayne Wade buying a share of the Utah Jazz. Uh, Austin, what do you make of that? Oh, man. Let, let's start with the just the initial shock uh, because – I followed Dwayne Wade's career. I always thought I was always a fan of his, uh, a fan of watching him play basketball. He always uh, seemed to, I don't know, come up big in in, in the biggest moments. Uh, and then at, when he retired, I remember kind of feeling like a like a fan type sadness, like oh man, I'm not going to get to see him play anymore, and wonder what if he'll be around the game at all. And fast forward, he's done some TNT hits and things like that. Uh, but the initial shock that it said Dwayne Wade and Utah Jazz ownership in the same sentence, I don't know about all you guys, but I had to read it two or three times to make sure, okay, is this actually Adrian Wojnarowski or is this a fake oh, thing? Is I this the same way. Yeah. a bot that's sending this out? Because I thought there's no way. Dwayne, what, what connection does Dwayne Wade have to the, to the <laughs> state of Utah and the Utah Jazz and Lo and behold, Ryan Smith knows everybody and everyone, and everyone loves him. Uh, and so it's just a, it's a really cool thing to start off that, that Dwayne Wade, Flash, is part owner of the Utah Jazz, whether it's 1% or, or bigger. It's just really, really cool. And then uh, I, I think that it's going to have so many great implications uh, socially, politically, uh, and, and, and all those hot button topics. I think that it's progressive in the right way where we need some progression in this area. And uh, I'm excited. I think it's, I think it's really good news for the state and for the franchise. Sorny, uh, you know, a lot of meetings are held on golf courses and apparently that's where those two met uh, Ryan Smith and Dwayne Wade. What's your take on this? Is, does it make the jazz cool all of a sudden nationally? Yeah, I think it helps a lot. You know, I was talking to my son about it and he was kind of like saying, how random is this? Dwayne Wade, uh, an owner of the jazz, you know, and I said, how is it? Where did it come from? 
And I just said, well, he's a friend of Ryan Smith's. And like Austin said, you know, that he must know a lot of people. And it's like, he's got a good connection there. But and I agree with what Austin said too, about, you know, there's a perception out there about Utah, which is kind of a backwards place. It's not really friendly to minorities. And it's, you know, some of it's deserved, but uh, having someone like Wade, you know, can help change those perceptions nationally. And also I think it's going to help just, uh, you know, help the, the, the perception among athletes. And so, you know, people talk about maybe he can get some guys to come here and uh, that maybe wouldn't otherwise. And so that's, a, that's got to be a positive too. So I think overall it's all positive. Austin, uh, what do you, what's your take on it? Obviously uh, big news and uh, kind of changes the dynamics of the jazz a little bit. And he yeah. says he wants to be involved. So how, how involved do you think he'll be? Uh, I mean, I, I was pretty excited. And just like uh, the other Austin said, Austin Horton, um, much better looking Austin Horton, much more talented Austin Horton. Um, I was, I'll give you 25 minutes to stop talking to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I was, um, I was like, I, I was a little stunned. It was really shocking. I think it gives the jazz a lot more cachet and, uh, legitimacy on the national scale. And, you know, just as well as what Austin and, and Mike were implying, you know, that I think the social ramifications are going to be big. You know, I think uh, anyone who follows Dwayne Wade knows, you know, um, LGBTQT issues are really important to him. You know, uh, obviously, um, equality is very important to him being an African American and all that kind of stuff. I think it's going to be uh, a great opportunity to use the jazz as a platform for social change and to be like really like to be leaders in the in, you know, the sports realm and those kind of things, which is something that Ryan Smith already said, you know, that the team is going to be actively an anti racist. And I think it's going to it's going to really have great ramifications for the jazz in that way. No, you know, I think Austin, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said it's a progression for the franchise. Cause it really is in a lot of ways. And it's, you know, basketball might be the, the benefactor of all this bottom line, cause it'll open things up and let people know that free agents know that this is a cool place to come. Dwayne Wade's one of the owners for crying out loud. Mm -hmm. So should be good. Well, let's move on to for the second quarter, let's talk about the jazz and let's talk about uh, the injury to uh, Donovan Mitchell. Mike, that couldn't have come at a worse time. This two game series with the Lakers is kind of a big deal, but uh, boy, there was lack, uh, serious lack of star power in the first game. Well, you know, I was going to say, I was doing a lot of yard work yesterday, so I kind of didn't see much of the game, but I turned it on the second quarter and I'm looking at the lineup and I thought it was their G League team, D League team, whatever. I say number three, who's number three? Who's number five? Who's number 21? I mean, all these guys, I thought it just looked like a, a guys they threw together and some guy named Forrest. And, you know, I mean, I, I don't even, I guess I need to get back on the jazz, you know, bandwagon again and, and start following them a little bit more. But no, it was, uh, it was quite a, it was kind of an entertaining game. I kind of check, kept checking back in and they got down by a lot and all of a sudden they're up and they, sent into overtime so it was an entertaining game but uh you know i think the jazz are you know it, it did come at a bad time but it's maybe it's good in the fact they get some experience for some of these guys that don't play much because uh, they might need them at some point and with the way it's been going so far but yeah i feel bad for you know donovan to be out for at least a week but the good news is you look at their schedule after they have the lakers they got four pretty easy games coming up you know houston a couple against minnesota those are the two worst teams in the west you got sacramento so yeah, hopefully by the time he comes back, they'll uh, they'll have picked up a few more wins and be okay. Austin, do you think they'll be able to hold on to the number one seed uh, even if they lose the second game to the Lakers? Yeah, it's it's interesting, isn't it? Because there's a big passionate uh, push that it seems to be important to a lot of people that they end up with that number one seed in the Western Conference, and I, I get why, and I think it'd be really cool, and obviously the number one seed has won the uh, conference, I think 24 times in the three point era. And that's the most of any other seed, which that's not news to anybody, but uh, I, I think it's kind of what, in fact, Chris Mannix uh, and Sam Amick uh, said on the zone recently that it's more about avoiding the Lakers uh, and uh, the Clippers in that in as much, as long as you can, rather than being the one seed. But to answer your question, can they hold on to it? I think they can. Uh, it's weird to say, but Donovan Mitchell, I think, is the best Utah Jazz player. I don't think he's the most important. Uh, I, I think that uh, that would belong to uh, either Rudy Gobert or Jordan Clarkson. 
Uh, but the way Clarkson has played since the All-Star break, po- probably not him anymore. But Rudy Gobert, an injury to Rudy Gobert would sink this team uh, and knock on wood for anyone that's suspicious or uh, superstitious out there. Donovan Mitchell, rest up, get that leg better. The team, I think, is deep enough and talented enough to hold on to the number one seed. If they happen to slide a bit, it may not be the end of the world, but as long as they hit the, the postseason all healthy, I think the promise of this team is still there. Asta, totally healthy. The Jazz against the L.A. teams, and they're, they're healthy too. Are the Jazz better than them? Can the Jazz get by either one of those teams in the playoffs if everybody's healthy? I don't know. I'll, um, you know, I, I think the Jazz are going to have a really good chance at, you know, having a deep playoff run. But I don't think anything's nearly as, um, like, predictable and, like, as, as much as people think. I think it's really going to be, like, a game-by-game situation depending on who their draws are. You know, I think – if the Jazz have a couple stretches where the the three pointer isn't falling the way that it has been all year, I think it's going to be really hard to get past the Lakers or the Clippers. I, I I really think the Jazz have a great chance to get those sixteen wins in the playoffs, but like just like I was saying, I think every game is going to be hard. I think it's going to be really like a night by night thing. All right. Well, we hear the the buzzer about to drop. It's halftime. Let's move on to the third quarter. Let's switch sports. Let's talk football. Utah held their spring football game uh, yesterday. Charlie Brewer, 15 for 15 passing. Uh, Austin, is that because he's really good or because Utah's defensive backfield struggled? Austin Horton, I'm sorry. Uh, (laughs) I think it's because it's a, yes, I think it's because it's a spring game. Uh, (laughs) And I, I hate to douse water on, Utah fans uh, excitement here, but, and look, I, I get it, especially after a year of not being in the stadium and they've made some changes to the South end zone that is still under construction. And my next door neighbor is a ridiculous Utah Utes fan and he painted his face and went to the game and oh, it was, it was exciting for <laughs> those who have that, that, you know, following, but it's a spring game. It's against his own teammates. I, I don't know how much to take away from it other than, Charlie Brewer chose Utah and he's got some good. St- in fact, I, Dirk, it was you that shared with the big show. I thought the best uh, idea of Charlie Brewer, he's not a bad insurance plan if all else fails. And I think he, that's what he showed yesterday is he can do it when he needs to. Right. He did. Mike uh, 15 for 15 against anybody is uh, pretty darn good from what I understand. I'm yeah, not that's, sure. yeah. That sounds like Zach Wilson, doesn't it? You know, like he did in that one uh, bowl game with a potato time. bowl. Yeah. But, um, you know, I guess we have to, you know, he's got a great reputation. He came in as a four-year starter at Baylor. And there was a guy we had last, I can't remember his name now, you know, he kind of faded. He this guy that came in and he had a, he'd served for four years at South Carolina and he Bentley. wasn't uh, that great, you know, I don't think. <laughs> uh, he, he had a couple of good moments, but so you have to take with a grain of salt that maybe, you know, this, this guy is going to be pretty good. But then on the other hand, Maybe he's just going to be, uh, you know, not not as great as maybe we thought the guy was last year, and he didn't turn out to be that great. So, but I think it's, you know, they got some good quarterbacks in there, and uh, the other guys get healthy. There's got a lot of competition, and you know, and the, but then that's just a quarterback. You got to worry about the defense and the running backs and everything else. But uh, he he was pretty impressive from what I hear. I didn't see it. So, Austin, uh, you did a story uh, talking about the fans coming back to the stadium. It, it wasn't a packed house, but there was an enthusiastic crowd there. Are things getting back to normal? And I'm talking maybe football in general. And it looks like there's some optimism that they're going to be able to fill all the seats this fall. Yeah, that's what Scott Cole, the uh, associate athletic director at Utah, told me is that right now the Pac-12 is planning on having full capacity um, in the fall, which is which would be incredible. I think it'd be amazingly fun um, just to to have that atmosphere back. Um, you know, I, I think we're, I think we're getting ready for it. You know, I, we we're seeing, you know, I think some places have started a little too prematurely getting people back in their stadiums and in their arenas, like uh, the Texas Rangers had that, uh, played opening day with a full house. Well, they'll be out of contention later. So they need, yeah, they might as well sell the tickets now, I guess. Um, but (laughs) you know, I, I think things are feeling, I think the, the general feeling is that, you know, things are, are getting better. Um, I, it just to just to give like a sad take on that, you know, I, I saw something on Twitter that was like the someone really lamented that, um, you know, um, Ty Jordan never got to hear the the roar of the crowd, you know, while uh, you know when he was scoring touchdowns for the Utes. So, 
that was that kind of you know was a little gut wrenching, but um, again, you know, it'll be good to have people back in in the uh, in the stadium. Guys, uh, maybe just quick response. Do you think Utah will win the South this year, or is it too much to be determined because we don't know exactly what USC is going to look like in Arizona State? Um, maybe just uh, how about a one word answer? Uh, will Utah win the South, Austin? Horton, sorry. No, the Sun Devils will. Mike? I think probably uh, USC is going to win it, so I'd say no also. The other Austin. The November curse is real. I think they won't. Yeah. <laughs> right. they, they always fade in November. I want to be friends with everybody up on the hill, so I'm going to say yes. I thought so, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, fourth quarter, the final quarter. Let's talk about the NFL draft. The sporting news just came out with uh, another seven-round mock draft. And looks like the state of Utah is going to be well represented. Um, Oz and I were just talking today, you know, who would have ever thought that two of the first five guys projected to be taken would be Utah high school football alums. I mean, that is, uh, that speaks highly for the state. Uh, Us Norton have things changed is Utah uh, becoming a prime place to, to raise collegiate football players. Uh, I think things have changed, uh, I, but I think they're still changing. If I can cheat a little there, uh, it takes a long time to get up to the ranks of someone like Texas and, and California and Florida when it comes to raising high level football players. But I think that things have changed and are continuing to change in a, a, a hastened manner. I think that there's a lot of really good talent uh, coming up in this state and it's only going to get better. I'm more interested to see if the local colleges can hang on to the local high school athletes rather than if they get to the NFL, but it's still really cool to see two of the top five guys from Utah. So Ernie, what do you think? Uh, you've covered high school football and college football in the state for a long time. Is it just the population change that's happening or is coaching getting better? What do you attribute the, uh, the rise well, we got to see if it's going to be a trend or not, too. It could be a one-year thing. You know, we got two guys in the top five. It used to be we get one guy, you know, Jordan Gross in the top 10 and, you know, Kevin Dyson's in the top 20. And so, you know, over the years, they've always had one or two guys up there. And uh, to have two in the top five is amazing, you know. And just to give you a quick word on that, though, I just feel bad for, you know, Zach Wilson, as great as he is, I, I feel bad that he he's going to the Jets because uh, – not just because my my son likes it. it's his favorite team you know so he's a little worried about it but uh just there the fact a that it's fan in salt lake i like yeah, that can you believe it but uh i'm afraid he might get eaten alive out there with that with the new york press and everything else because you know if, if he fails it's gonna they're gonna be all over the guy and here's sam darnold i mean here's a guy that was pretty dang good you know he was he wasn't terrible and he gets run out of town after two or three years and, you know, Wilson, if he doesn't perform, he could be in the same boat, you know. So if he could have gone to San Francisco where they're a little more laid back, I think it'd be more of a, of a perfect opportunity for him. So let's, let's, uh, let's hope that he is able to uh, perform like he did last, last year and, and make it back there. It'd be great for him, but uh, we'll see what happens. Austin, besides the two of the top five, you got Jay Tefeli, you've got uh, Bahoko, you've got the BYU guys. The state of Utah could be very well represented in this draft, ironically, in a year when no Utah Utes or even mm. Utah State Aggies will be taken. Yeah, that is kind of interesting. Um, it'll be, yeah, it, it, I, I think Sorny is right. I think it will be kind of, it, it will be interesting to see if this is like a continual trend or if this is just a, a one-off year where the state produces great talent. Um, you know, just to just to add your early quest, earlier question, I think, you know, it probably is a, a, a numbers game as far as the, the population increase. It seems like every year there's like two or three new high schools in the state. And I just, the, it seems to me like, you know, the more kids you have playing football, the more talent is going to emerge from, from that pool. I, I think, I think it makes sense that, you know, Utah is starting to emerge as a, a little bit of a, a, a football power nationally, you know, and, and teams like corner Canyon and, and, and Bingham in the past have historically been, you know, pretty well, you know, acclaimed and pretty well ranked uh, on the national scale. So, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's kind of a cool thing. But next year, when next year when the youths are, are in the draft, I think that'll be it'd be fun to see how many the state gets in total. 
Yeah, I think there'll be a bumper crop of Utes, but this year it's uh, all about BYU and Utah High School uh, alums. Um, well, guys, we appreciate you joining us. It's time for our parting shots now. Uh, Sorny, you want to lead us off today? Sure, I'd love to. Um, I'm going to give a, a split one today. I, I'm, first of all, I'd just like to shout out to the Utah gymnastics team. You know, they, uh, I'm not a big gymnastics fan. I haven't followed it. I haven't covered them since 1984 when they won it one year, but way back before you guys were born. But um, anyway, they, uh, they came through yesterday and I actually watched part of that thing. I didn't watch it for two full hours, but they did well. They, they had their best score of the year and they still couldn't win it. They came in third place and it's frustrating to watch gymnastics because they can, you can have a perfect routines all the way through. And the other team is, has one, one landing better. They beat you by a quarter of a point. So that was frustrating for them. And just a quick shout out. I got to talk about golf, you know, uh, that's, that's, you know, my, my, my deal is golf and, uh, Blake Tomlinson from the university of Utah had the, the best 36 holes or 54 hole score ever for the university of Utah finished to tie for first yesterday at the Thunderbird collegiate down in Arizona, the Utah Utes finished in sixth place. They're having one of their best years ever. They're probably going to make the national, uh, tournament for the first time in a long time. So uh, good, good job for Blake Tomlinson. Good stuff. Sorny. Uh, Austin Horton, what's your parting shot? Yeah, uh, I'm going to be pessimistic. Sorry. Uh, the jazz in overtimes, it's starting to get almost ridiculous. They haven't won an overtime game since January of 2018. That's an 0-9 streak. Uh, they, and I, I started to dive into some of the numbers as to why that is, and I thought at first, well, maybe the defense presses in overtime, or maybe the offense presses in overtime. The answer is actually both, because without getting too geeky, uh, they're, they're differential – they give up in losses in the last four seasons. Uh, they give about three points per quarter more in losses than they do in, in wins. Well, a quarter is 12 minutes and an overtime period is five minutes. That's 58% shorter than a regular quarter. And they're giving up double the amount of points. It's almost just under six. So I looked at the defense, went, oh, that's a problem. But then when you look at their offense, they, over the last four years, average 54% effective field goal percentage, but in time games, they're in the 30s, the thir like 32.2 effective field goal percentage. So it's not the end of the world, but it is kind of like, okay, our, if you're an NBA title contender, you should probably be really good in overtime games too, and they're flat, just the worst in the NBA over the last four seasons in, in overtime games, and it doesn't determine anything other than it makes for cranky jazz fans and some for cranky radio guys to be pessimistic about <laughs> that's fascinating that's good work you're gonna give tyson ewing a run for his money all those oh no no up. i don't want to tyson <laughs> can have all of it. <laughs> <laughs> all right the other austin what's your parting shot yeah um if i can just do like a personal plug uh this week i did a, a story on marcus maley for abc4 um he played I, I hope i said his name right I, I apologize if he didn't if he's listening which i'm sure he's not um but anyway uh, I did a story on him. Uh, he played football at Weber State, and then he went on to uh, have a few years in the uh, NFL with the Saints and the Eagles. But uh, I did a story on him and kind of the adversity that he and his family have been dealing with the aftermath of, you know, playing high level football. He's he's having some real issues with uh, with brain trauma, with injury. And um, there's no way to tell on a living brain, uh, but he he thinks it could be some form of CTE. So. It was really fascinating to hear from him. I also talked to his wife about the, the challenges he has at home and just how difficult that is. And um, I don't know, it's, it's a really complicated issue because, uh, you know, pe football is really important to a lot of people and it's a, it's a ton of fun, but the, the damage that, uh, you know, happens to these guys, um, you know, we saw the, the, the guy in South Carolina last week. Um, it's pretty amazing what, what happens to their brains. So it's, it's a tough issue. I don't know what the answer is, but I encourage people to look into it because it, it, it is pretty interesting. It is, you know, as, as a guy who hardly played for East High, it kind of messed me up. I like to blame football, but I wasn't in there enough. You are a little loopy, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't out there enough to get affected by it. I'm a, my parting shots can be about football as well. I just want to give a shout out to Weber State. It's been kind of a weird year up there. They only played five games and they struggled to win most of those. <laughs> but uh, they did win the big sky championship. They're uh, hosting a playoff game for the fifth straight year, or they're in the playoffs for the fifth straight year, hosting for the fourth straight year and just wish them well as they uh, go after that uh, 
They got National screwed in their seating, by the way, but we'll see. We'll see how they. How yeah, that they goes. weren't even seated this year, you know. But it was probably because of the close games and the fact that they only played five times. But you know, they've got a tough draw. If they win their first game, then they'll play. I think they play the number one seeded uh, South Dakota State uh, in the second round. Um, so they got a tough road. But Jay Hill, I saw a quote from him. And he said, "You know, at, at this time of year, it's all about winning football games. So it doesn't matter who you're playing if you want to." advance and win the championship you got to beat whoever's in front of you so wish the weaver state wildcats well um guys i want to thank you again for joining us we got our uh, our drawing now to, uh, to just a note uh we're tired of asking people what they want for prizes so we're just deciding what the prizes are now this week it's a fantastic donovan mitchell number 45 uh jazz lanyard so you'll that, never lose your keys again if, if you don't like it whoever the winner is you know, kick brick, you know, kick bricks, you know, like, uh, that, <laughs> that's your prize. Sorry. I'm not saying kick bricks. I'm saying okay, sell so it here, on eBay. Here's so. the guy. Here we go. I'm learning okay. how to spin that wheel. Yeah. He's getting better at it. Here we go. The winner. Uh, I'm the winner is a young fella or could be old, I guess named Cameron Manganson. I not really sure who that is, but Cameron Manganson, I'll just put that right there. Oh, he's one of our, one of our followers. We love him. Yeah. So, great guy. Fantastic. Congratulations. Hey, before we uh, sign off today, I want to thank our engineer, Sammy Facer for putting the show together and Austin and Austin and Mike for joining us. Uh, anything else? Austin? Where I'm can, happy. Where no. can they listen to the podcast oh just about anywhere you, it's on apple spotify um i put it up on our website this is the place sports.com we also put this uh zoom recording on youtube so you can uh see our uh, facial expressions and uh our liveliness so yeah that's why we bring good I'm looking glad i wore a shirt <laughs> <laughs> that would be an excellent episode. the shirtless episode in the summer is going to be a hit Ooh, we've that's got, for sure that's an idea guys. that would be awesome i'm yeah. gonna start working out so. we, we gotta get brian brown that's one to get monson on for oh absolutely 100 yeah we'll get we'll get gordon we'll get brian brown um, have to look i might have to shave my shoulders but we'll, we'll figure this out <laughs> too much sorny doesn't like it sorny doesn't like it <laughs> he's heard it all from me before uh, so he, anyway uh thanks again guys and thank you to our listeners and uh we'll see you down the road and thanks again guys yeah, yeah.